Hi there. Uh, I'm going to do a quick walkthrough uh, with a bit of commentary on what you will find uh, both uh, for standard features and some add-ons uh, that were developed fairly recently for uh, GP Star's uh, controller kits for the wand and pack and the HasLab equipment. Uh, basically, I have already done an upgrade. Uh, I am running pretty much the uh, uh, what should be the production boards for both, both the pack and the wand. So everything that I'm demonstrating is current as of, uh, this is uh, July 1st, 2023. And uh, yeah, so I've already turned on power to my pack. So I'm powering the audio amplifier and all the devices. Uh, perhaps the easiest uh, to demonstrate first is the ion arm. It turns on the pack as you would expect. I'll turn down that volume a little bit. So you can flip the ion switch on, uh, ion switch, uh, and it will turn on the pack. Once the pack is active, if you flip up the activate switch, that's normally what powers on both the wand and the pack at the same time. Uh, now we're in ready to fire mode. All right. What's cool is if I turn off the wand. It turns off both the wand and the pack. So regardless of where this switch is, now if I move this switch the opposite direction, now it's uh, now everything comes back up and, uh, and runs. What's kind of cool about that, uh, whether intentional or not, is you could power everything down and then have someone and then tell someone, hey, switch me on. And no matter what the state of the ion arm switch, it's always going to turn everything back on. So you can, whenever you want to reenact the elevator scene, uh, feel free to do so. Uh, that's easy to do. All right, so let's talk a little bit about uh, some features uh, that have been uh, added to my particular setup. I've taken the liberty of converting my bar graph. So instead of the stock HasLab 5 LED, this is the 28 segment bar graph. This uses uh, an additional serial connection, which is built into the controller and an additional five volt out. So basically I've already got power and the serial connection needed to run this. This is really nice. Uh, as you can see, the animation sequence is so much cooler uh, with the additional elements uh, than with the stock five. The stock five will still do sort of the same uh, pulsing and for the 1984 and 89 mode uh, the bar graph when in idle state will just sort of do that little bounce uh, between the the lowest setting and whatever the uh, current power level is turn off the beeping uh, so you may notice there is a light on the top this is uh, hat light 2 this is uh, one of the add-ons uh, that you can do. So this is built into the controller. So if you want to replace that little orange nubbin uh, that comes stock with the, uh, the wand, this is fairly easy to cut off, drill out, and place a lens uh, in that spot. And all I have is just a standard uh, amber LED right behind that. Another upgrade uh, that you could do is uh, upgrade hat one, basically turning this button into a LED as well with a uh, clear lens or with uh, amber lens and making this the switch using a standard push button. I've not yet done this. There's a bit more involved with getting some of the plastic apart here. I'm not quite ready to, <laughs> to tackle that, but that feature is available. But I'll tell you the one that's really worth it. That one tip light. So when you are firing at a low speed, you've got a nice uh, reddish proton stream and a slow blink on that one tip, which is always white, by the way. This is just set up to use a uh, flat top LED with a 160 degree. So basically it's, it's almost flat. Uh, you could see it all the way around. And so it, it, it comes up pretty much right to the edge. I just put a little plastic dome, 3D printed a little dome to put over it just so that you don't see the LEDs. Um, 
but as you turn up the power, the strobing effect is more pronounced. The proton stream goes more amber. Oh, and let's show if you hold down and keep firing at the full stream, you will get not only the bursts of smoke, as you can see from the end filter, but it will do the overheat sequence and the venting sequence. There we go. All right, so some features that were added to this. Uh, first of all, uh, switching modes. Um, I have done the replacement of the of the stock lights uh, in my lid with a RGB uh, pixel ring. So this can do all the different colors. So this is built into the software already. It knows that if you have the ability um, with, the, with such pixels, it will do the color changing. So as I change modes, you can see the tip of the wand will change to the color of the mode. So we're in the uh, stasis beam and uh, Mason, Mason Blast. Now there's another, there's a new special mode that was just added. Uh, and uh, this is part of the uh, video game modes, by the way. So when you get to this uh, fifth mode, you'll see this light, the slow blow, these start blinking. Basically we're in a vent mode. So if you just press the activate button, it instantly triggers the pack venting sequence. So if you just wanted to show off or just test the uh, smoke system, that will, uh, this, this mode will let you do that and only that. And then press it one more time and we go into the menu system. So this menu is audio only. Uh, we, you move through this menu. You may have seen this demonstrated before. At level one, we have the jukebox mode, basically. So that'll start playing the music. Press it again, it stops. All right, so as we get to number two on the menu, that will advance the track. So if you uh, press intensify, that'll advance. And if you've gone too far and wanna go back a track, just press the alt button. Uh, so that's uh, menu level two. If we go up to three, that's the music volume. Intensify will uh, raise the volume, while Alt Fire will uh, lower the volume. Going up to menu four, that is the sound effects. So if you have both music and sound effects uh, playing, this will increase the sound effects, this will lower the sound effects. So basically, uh, because this is polyphonic sound, those music tracks are on their own sort of uh, setting. Uh, it, the pack and the wand know uh, whether or not a music track is playing and it will adjust the volume of that track independently while a uh, setting, separate setting for the uh, sound effects. So any sound effects that uh, need to play, they'll pick up the uh, current uh, sound effect volume before they play. And then lastly, uh, menu level five, you press uh, only the uh, intensify button affects this. Press that button and basically the, the fifth element will uh, lock steady. That means that you are in uh, track loop mode. So whatever track is currently selected or playing, uh, when you uh, have music playing, it will just keep playing that track over and over. Press it again, it'll go back to blinking. That indicates that you are out of the, um, you are out of that uh, loop mode. All right, and then press one more time and we're back to the standard menu. All right, so let's go, Let's talk about um, the system menu that was updated fairly recently. Uh, Michael's demonstrated this. I'm just gonna give some additional commentary as we walk through it. Again, when the pack is uh, powered down, same process, you just press the uh, alt fire button, you get into the menu system. The first menu you get is the same one that we just covered. This is the basically the music and audio controls. So same levels, uh, number five is the loop sound effects, music volume, uh, track advance or, or de-advance, whatever that, <laughs> whatever that word is, uh, track stop and start. And if you keep turning this uh, counterclockwise, which uh, goes down 
uh, you'll notice the slow blow light uh, lights up. If you keep going, that's it. So we're basically in a second level of the menu system. And in this mode, we're affecting system operations. First of all, this level is really important. There's uh, audio cues and feedback. As you press this, you will cycle through the mode. So we just went into 1984 mode. Press it again, you go into 89. 1989. Press it one more time and you're back to afterlife. Afterlife. I'm gonna go into 1984 to demonstrate some things. 1984. All right, so we're now in 1984 mode. If we go up to the second level, now we're able to affect uh, some other pack operations. Proton pack vibration enabled. Okay, so that just enabled the proton pack vibration. Proton pack vibration firing enabled. And now firing enabled for the proton pack. So basically, um, those are two separate options that you can choose from uh, how you want the uh, the pack's uh, vibration feature to work. And then one more time, we'll disable all of that. Proton pack vibration disabled. So basically three states, uh, the proton pack uh, vibration overall, proton pack vibration fire while firing, and then disable. Now, uh, while we're in this uh, vibration mode, if you press the alt button, Neutrino wand vibration enabled. That turns on the vibration for the neutrino wand. So uh, this this button does have a different effect uh, depending on which of the uh, menu settings you're in. Press it again, and we go we enable the uh, neutrino wand uh, firing vibration. Neutrino wand vibration firing enabled. And then again, the third time we'll disable. Neutrino wand vibration disabled. So in my case, I have I don't have the vibration motor, so I'm going to leave mine off. And make sure. Proton pack vibration enabled. Proton pack vibration firing enabled. Proton pack vibration disabled. Okay, so I've disabled mine because, like I said, I've I've sacrificed those for space and other things. Maybe I'll put them back in, but for right now, I, I don't have that, so I'm just going to leave that off. All right, so we're going to go up to menu level three. Now we're in, I believe, cyclotron, counter -clockwise. cyclotron operation. So intensify is just going to toggle between clockwise and counter counterclockwise. Cyclotron clockwise. Cyclotron counterclockwise. All right, so that affects the cyclotron direction, and then the alt fire affects some of the lighting, which is only applicable to the 84 and 89 modes. Cyclotron three LEDs. Cyclotron one LED. So the one LED just makes sure that there's a single LED in the center of each lens for those modes. Cyclotron three LEDs. Whereas three LED just lights the entire uh, triplet of standard uh, three LEDs in the center of each lens. I'm gonna leave that on just so we can show what that looks like. Uh, number four, this should be smoke settings. Smoke disabled. Smoke enabled. So I definitely use smoke. So this lets you uh, toggle this on and off. Say you go inside a building, you wanna make sure that when you overheat, you don't um, set off the, the smoke system. You can come in here real quick without having to open the pack or any doors and flip any switches. You can just do it in software and it will change that until you basically power off at the talent cell. So when you power off uh, the entire uh, setup, Everything will go back to defaults when you power it back up again. But as long as there's power to the boards, it remembers these settings. Um, you can control these as defaults in the software. So you could say, I always want smoke to be disabled by default, and you want to go into the menu to enable it. That's perfectly fine. You can do that. You can, you can set that default, upload, and then that's uh, now set. Overheating disabled. And then the alt fire uh, affects the overheating uh, feature. Overheating enabled. Again, I've got smoke. I want to use it. So I'm going to leave that enabled. All right. And then number five. Cross the streams. This one's really cool. Uh, number five will go steady when cross the streams or cross the streams mix are uh, used. Cross the streams mix. So the difference between uh, cross the streams and cross the stream mix is basically whether or not you have to hold and keep holding both the uh, intensify and alt fire buttons to uh, trigger and keep the uh, cross the streams uh, feature running. Video game modes. And then of course, if you press it one more time, you go back into video game modes and that fifth element is going to blink to indicate that. So I wanna show the cross the streams because this is really cool. Cross the streams. All right, so we can't 
We can't power up the wand just yet. We need to exit the menu system. So what we'll do is we'll just keep going up. So keep turning clockwise until we see all five LEDs lit. The slow blow will go uh, dark and then press the alt fire button again. And we are back to uh, ready to ready to power up. <laughs> all right. So you can see we're in uh, 1984 mode, cyclotron counterclockwise, and three LED modes. So that's basically all the settings that we modified uh, in the menu system, all done without having to open up the pack, change any uh, uh, switches or other settings. All right, so let's show what is cross the streams. So. Finish powering up the wand. All right, as you see, the um, we'll go down to the lowest setting. You see that just does a little bounce. All right, so that's our normal proton stream. While we are throwing the stream, press the Alt Fire button, and that will trigger the cross the streams mode. As you can see, the barrel LEDs go full white. And if you hear it in the pack, there's a bit more of that uh, ramp up sound uh, that you're used to hearing uh, when the cross the streams uh, causes the packs to sort of go into overload. And if you go full stream while crossing the streams. This will actually cause the overload or overheat sequence. So basically, I think out of the box, the default is the um, uh, overheat sequence really only fires when you're on the uh, highest setting. And uh, for the uh, cross the streams mode, it only overheats while crossing the streams. If I'm wrong about that, I'll try to update in the comments or uh, overlay on the video uh, before I post this. All right, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch back to afterlife mode because I'm gonna show there's one slight difference on this one. So let's go all the way back down here. 1989. Uh, in 1989, just has a slightly different startup sound and hum for the, uh, for the pack. Afterlife. That's the primary difference. Afterlife, you know. All right, cross the streams is still on. You see, it remembers that setting. And we're gonna exit the menu. All right, so back to afterlife mode with cross the streams. You see our uh, cyclotron direction is still set to counterclockwise because I didn't change that. All right, so hopefully this will be heard on the video. Listen for the uh, distinct change. It sort of has that additional whoop, 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 whoop as it's uh, as the as it's spinning up. So there's uh, definitely a different audio cue on the afterlife mode, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, I know Michael likes it. I really agree with him on that one. And that kind of confirmed uh, what I thought is I wasn't holding down the uh, alt fire button. So it was doing the minor overheat. So the occasional burst of smoke, but it wasn't doing the uh, full overheat sequence until I held down both of the buttons. So um, I believe that's, that's the, uh, just the standard cross the streams mode. All right, so it's, this is always cool. Um, I just want to address uh, one thing real quick. Uh, we've had uh, some questions about the. Let's turn off that beacon. 
had some questions about the uh, size of the LED rings. I believe the one that I have installed is a uh, 35 pixel, which sits at about 96 millimeters. So basically this, you can see from the calipers, that is the, uh, that's the size of the ring inside of the uh, cake. There are other options you can use. There are, uh, I think, a 82 millimeter, which may be a 24 uh, pixel uh, LED ring that is available. So there's a there's a multi there's a multi ring set available on Amazon. Uh, this one this one's very particular. Uh, this has to be 40 pixels because I think it is uh, 100 and 136 millimeters. Uh, between uh, on the outer dimensions so this has to line up precisely but it's a multi-ring kit so there's another one in there that I think is 82 millimeters and that might be just uh, 24 pixels that would fit uh, it would basically fit right behind this uh, center ring on the on the cake and there is another one that I think is uh, close to the uh, to the 35 pixel. I don't know if it's 35 pixels or 32 pixels, but from that maker, uh, it sits at I think 112 millimeters. And as you can see, that's almost the width of the cake itself. So uh, that places it pretty much edge to edge, almost. So just be careful, uh, or you know, use your discretion as to which. Uh, which ring you want to use, but either one of those can be changed in software. So that's it. That's a walk through the menu system. Uh, hopefully, answering a few questions about the uh, uh, choice of products you can use. All right. Take care.